はいレッツトークブラッドボーンテーブルトップブラッドボーンバイドウェイウィアブラッドボーンのカードゲーム This is happening on Sunday. We're doing a tabletop stream. It should be good. Oh boy. Check the schedule for your local time. It will be 1 p.m. my time. We're playing it. I've got an entire room dedicated to streaming tabletop gaming with unique um, overlays and camera angles and all this stuff and a mounted board cam. I'm getting a new camera in today for much sharper image on the board itself. So hopefully it'll be good. It should be fun. Okay. Really quickly, because I don't think I have to say a lot about this particular aspect, but let's talk Bloodborne soundtrack. Soundtrack. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't think I need to say much about it. So I've seen maybe like one person ever say like, I don't like the Bloodborne soundtrack. Okay. I, I don't know what you... As somebody who's been doing music since I was three years old and is a huge fan of almost all types of music, the only types I'm not fans of are new country and new rap. I'll dig some old school hip hop any day. For some old country, instrumental country, hell yeah. But, <clears throat> um, I don't know. This this made the first playthrough of Bloodborne, uh, or this, particularly of the DLC here, made it. It made it. In addition to the bosses being also incredibly awesome. It just, it blew me away. Um, I don't know. I don't think I need to say much about it, but we can listen to this whole song. <laughs> That's okay if the music is a bit loud over me. That's the point. We're listening to the music. We're focusing on the soundtrack right now. Ah. You were at my side all along. <laughs> Don't worry, the music will get louder. I don't even care that, uh, spoiler alert, I mean, we're going to talk a lot of Bloodborne, so if you haven't played the game and you don't want spoilers, probably cover your ears right now. I don't even care that the Moonlight Sword was involved in this, in this fight, but holy shit, is that one way to, like, introduce it? They're like, here it is! This giant fucking crazy horse man! is going to do, like, anime sword shit and explosions and... Amazing. So good.
Excellent. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, yeah. I... There are... In... There are a large amount of tracks in this game that I praise highly. Um, overall, the music is just, it's phenomenal. Um, even though it's got that orchestral, like, complexity, like I was talking about before, there are very highlighted melodies that are not only easier to remember, they're just, I don't know. Very good, very good composition. <clears throat> um, I, music means a lot. Audio in general is, is a huge part of experiencing a game or a movie or anything like that. And this has a lot of emotional emotional uh, effect, really. Okay. We're good. Soundtrack's awesome. I can't, I can't. I mean, all the, all of the Soulsborne music is awesome, but this is the one that stands out for me. Um, yeah, all the, all the DLC music is fantastic. There's a ton of music in the main game that's also fantastic. It, DLC is tops for me, though. <clears throat> okay. Bloodborne. Bloodborne, um, Miyazaki began working on after Dark Souls 1. Soon after it, I think? after DLC. And, um, as you know, it was PlayStation 4 exclusive. But let me tell you, I'm not doing any of this analysis based on platform, FPS, whatever. Um, we're not here to discuss that. If anything, Bloodborne being as fantastic as it is, at 30 FPS, PS4 exclusive, is a testament to how good the game is overall. Um, it sucks that not everybody has a platform that can play it. But, um, there's the rub. Uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, 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 it was originally announced or leaked as Project Beast. And there was a there was a video. I remember I had saved it. I don't think I have it anymore. I oh, don't have it. Um. Beast. Project Beast. Beast Souls. No, I, I don't think I have it. <laughs> and people were like, Beast Souls. And it showed guns. The dude had a gun. And. A weapon that transformed in fucking fog gates, but they looked different. They're like arms coming out of them and shit. Mainstream, thanks for the resub. Um, and I was I was 100% on board. Like it was easy to tell that it was souls like, and yet it was much much more gritty. I mean, the, the opening cutscene has somebody with a saw cleaver just eviscerating, like, some dead dude. Like, what, or a dog, rather. It's like, yeah, whatever. This is the blood and sinew everywhere. They definitely wanted to be like, this is a visceral game. And they got it across. We jump into a completely different setting. Victorian inspired. Um, with, uh, you know, it's, it's got medieval hints in it. But it's, it's pretty different. Um, we'll talk about mechanics later. <clears throat> we'll, 
Let's talk about the intro movie. Um, I'll be honest, the intro cinematic for this game, when you create a new character, I don't know what the fuck is happening. It, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you're on a, you're in an operating table, and then a werewolf appears and gets close to you, and then catches on fire, and then you pass out, and then you wake up, and then there's little alien men on you that look gross, and then you pass out. And then a voice says, you found yourself a hunter. And then you wake up. And you're like, uh... Oh. So maybe the direction of the intro is not super... Like, you, you, you're signing forms with a dude, and then that stuff happens. Good! All signed and sealed. Um, yeah, yeah, and you're enlisted as a hunter, and then the game starts, and you wake up, <clears throat> and yeah, it's interesting, but, uh, <laughs> I don't really have much to say about that, <laughs> and then you start the game, and you don't have any weapons, and you feel helpless, and this fucking werewolf for a lot of people, kills you, and then you wake up in the hunter's room. And, um, you know, maybe you learn a little bit. It, it kind of, you, 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 you have to piece it together as you go, as opposed to Dark Souls kind of being like, here's main characters, here's a prophecy. And you're like, all right, let's try and do that. In this, it's like, uh, you're not as informed. <laughs> You're a hunter, and there's a hunter's dream, and there's an old guy, and he's like, yeah, go slay some beasts. Nice. All right. All right. Sure. That's cool. Um, I guess since we're talking about it, we can talk about lore and NPCs. <clears throat> uh, Bloodborne has very rich lore. Um, I certainly am not familiar with every detail. I don't remember it, but I certainly watched it all and like, yeah, yeah, I got the general gist of it. But, um, oh, did charity end? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Rip. Lower music, really? Okay. Um, we get the same, the same thing that... Dark Souls does, it, it's very cryptic about its lore. You can figure out lore through items and encounters with NPCs who are kind of cryptic themselves. Um, but we're back to Dark Souls 1 style, Demon's, Demon's Souls style, I, I, I'll call them complex NPCs, where you find them in the world, you interact with them, and then they leave their post and they go somewhere else to do something else. Um, uh, which again, it's <laughs> pros and cons. Damn it, Chalice Dungeons! Having the, uh, having flashbacks. No. Um, The lore is super cool. It's all it's all blood based, which fits the name. Um, I'm not really I'm not really gonna explain it here, and I don't really have a whole lot to say. Like, basically, as we continue from game to game, I have less and less to say about the things, other than how the game differs from the previous games. Basically, um, since this is more of like a. Uh, kind of analysis of each individual game, but all next to each other. Um, the lore in the base game seems like it doesn't need more to it. But then the DLC comes along, 
and just adds a whole nother layer. And you're like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's more than fine. Uh, I guess one thing that is different in this game is some of the lore is through. This kind of dips into mechanics. The chalice dungeons, which are completely optional. Completely optional chalice dungeons. Um, and they... they it's lore for, for where the blood came from and how first contact with the Great Ones happened and how healing blood became a thing in current day Yarnum and whatnot. <clears throat> Are those aliens moments in first place? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's crazy. Let's, let's just jump into mechanics less features. Transform weapons. I am a huge fan of transform weapons. It's like your standard Dark Souls weapon, except two of them, in most cases that are vastly different, are mixed into one. And it's cool. And it opens up the possibility for transform attacks, which I feel like is super flashy. But, um, I mean, it is flashy. <laughs> and it's badass. It's not too flashy. It's flashy enough for me. Best weapons of the series. I I like Bloodborne's weapon systems. Yeah, it's they're very fun to play with. Um, and yeah, you get more attacks per weapon because of these transform attacks and two modes for the for the weapons in general. Um. <clears throat> Let's really quickly touch on backstabbing and parrying. Parrying is much as you would expect from Dark Souls 1, timing-wise. However, with a gun, you can do ranged parries, so that can alter your, your parry timing uh, based on, on bullet travel time. Which is very interesting, because, uh, for example, if I'm parrying the Orphan of Kos... And, he's doing, and I'm far away, like, you gotta do a certain timing. But if you're right up next to him, you would have to delay it, because travel time's not there. Um, so again, it's an interesting dynamic. It really rewards you keeping a consistent distance from a boss while fighting it, if you want to consistently parry, anyways. Um, the backstab change, to me, feels like a, uh, a PvP change. They wanted to get rid of backstab fishing, um, which in PvP is more often seen as lag stabs. <laughs> you like do a roll and you get up and then you're teleported back and the dude is stabbing you in the back and you're like, well, all right, whatever. And that's just not a thing in Bloodborne. Um, you have to actually hit somebody in the back with a full charged attack, which is not an insignificant amount of time. And uh, and then you can get the backstabs off. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it mostly people mostly resort to parry spamming <laughs> because you can do that with guns from a distance where you can't really get punished for it except by being shot by them too. So. While I enjoy this combat the most, legitimately, um, it seems to fall flat when, it, when you take it into PvP. Also, the, they change stamina usage in this game to be far less than in Dark Souls. Um, maybe it's... As a comparison, maybe a, it's in a starting character in Dark Souls 1, you could dodge like three or four times and be out of stamina. Where in Bloodborne, you can probably dodge about ten times before you're out of stamina. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot less, and it's very noticeable. 
because you can just dash around, dash around, dash around, dash around. <clears throat> um, it's very cool. Very cool. Let's talk about Rally. Rally is the thing that I miss from every other Soulsborne game when I play it. Um, though it really fits more into Bloodborne's enemies or in, into its combat because the enemies are very aggressive. And Rally is, if you take damage, there is about a one and a half or two second window where if you deal damage in that time, you can regain some of your health, which is super risky. <clears throat> uh, because it makes you it makes you get greedy. You take a hit, you're like, no, I'll just I'll just hit him a bunch and then get my health back. But maybe he poises through it. We we haven't talked about poise at all. <laughs> but whatever. Um, I was just using that as a word. Um, yeah, it's it's a fantastic thing to complement this risk reward system that is already in place in Dark Souls. Do I attack? Do I do I block? Do I heal? Do I parry? It's fantastic, and it it, it fits beautifully, and I love it. And it it fits in theme with the um, with the game because you're shedding their blood. The game's about healing blood and regaining some health back. Uh, on top of that. Didn't like Rally was obsolete when enemy could potentially almost take all of your health in single hit slash combo. Mm, I mean, if they take all, almost all your health in a single hit, you can rally a lot of that back. <laughs> um, why start now? Yeah, well, I'm not starting to talk about I I don't think that's a valid point for for not liking Rally. Um, well, greed is good sometimes. Calculated greed is good. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to. I don't know. I. I, I don't. I'm. I'm not going to make it a, a discussion. I don't want it to really be a back and forth. I guess. Um, I'm just kind of keeping to, to to what I like about Bloodborne. Um. <clears throat> so many more new mechanics and features in this game. We talked about blood vials and farming blood vials. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I mean, there there are reasons for and against it, and ultimately, I just don't think it's a fun mechanic to have in place. Um, <clears throat> Dronus, thanks for resub, and Latro, thanks for the tip. Um... Bullets are a new resource, as well as the ability to create blood bullets, which I think is really cool. And you can use Rally to heal your blood bullets. So if you're using it wisely, you can technically have infinite bullets and uh, never use them as a consumable, as well as not having to use blood vials to recover your health. Or those bullets <clears throat> but um that's not really a I mean y you might use that strat but the nice thing is they provide you with things uh, like runes which are basically rings in this game and you can get a rune that restores your health on a visceral a visceral attack which if you parry somebody you get a visceral attack and if you have infinite bullets Via blood bullets, which cost health, you visceral, get your health back. Blood bullets, visceral, infinite bullets. It's it's cool. There's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff you can do. Um, <clears throat> runes also get better in New Game Plus. Mm, I don't think that's true. Don't think that's true. I mean, they're set numbers on most of them anyways. Maybe some of them? <clears throat> um, guns are an interesting addition to the game. They're basically your parry tool. However, you also have a new stat, Blood Tinge. Which means you can actually power up some guns to do good. And some guns get ridiculously good. Um, 
and uh, and they even have a cannon and a Gatling gun. So while they don't go ham on a ton of unique guns and stuff, there are some that really set it apart and make it a whole different game if you want to. If you want to. Additionally, the removal of the standard sorcery, m miracles, pyromancy, and even hex magic standard, I guess, if you want to call it that. I mean, it's not because it's Bloodborne. It's a different game than Soulsborne, or than the Dark Souls. But um, yeah, in this in this one, they still have a magic stat called Arcane, but they go Hunter Tool route, where you just collect these tools and they they consume bullets. Kind of doesn't make sense, but whatever. They consume bullets. They got to use some resource, and uh, allow you to cast spells. Spells. Um. That's cool. That's cool. They're very much a, like, utility thing, though. I mean, they can do really good damage, and you can have arcane builds. But particularly on, like, new game, early game, they're not going to do much, and you don't even get your first hunter tool until... I mean, you get the old hunter's bone, but your first damaging one, I guess, would be Ibritus Cthulhu Arms. Um, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. It's much more about melee in this game. And it's much more about dodging. No blocky. No blocky. They have two shields in the game. Neither of which are good at blocking physical stuff, really. Um. But it's, it's really it's all about dodging. Great. Insight is another mechanic. Insight, they, I guess they wanted something similar to humanity. Um, I could see Insight not even existing in the game, but Insight is, is a cool way to, to alter things in the game. Insight, um, at level 15, at, in, at 15 Insight, some enemies gain new abilities, which you could argue means that they get harder. Uh, at 40 Insight, you get new music in the Hunter's Dream, which is cool. At 50 Insight, you can see amygdala beasts when they're normally invisible. You can use Insight to purchase consumables at a special shot, shop. Um, having insight reduces your frenzy resistance. I guess the m more open-minded you are, the more susceptible you are to terrifying things, which is really cool. Bloodborne takes a Lovecraftian spin on the Souls universe, which I just found fantastic. Um... Yeah. Lovecraft has sanity a lot as a as a as a mechanic in well in in Lovecraftian games Cthulhu stuff it's about going mad about going insane and that's kind of what frenzy is uh it makes you explode your blood everywhere in this game and does like a set amount about 70% of your health or so and uh it's interesting, but it's cool. I like I like the mechanic. I was when you first encounter it, you're like, "What the what the fuck is happening? Is this bleed water?" Kappa. Um, <laughs> a great terror looms. Explosive aneurysm. Yeah. Very cool. Um, like I said, I think insight could have been could have been left out, but the inclusion of it. Provides for some really interesting, like, side stuff. Friendly water, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. It's cool. Very cool. The, 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 the game is all about granting you eyes on the inside. Insight. Eyes. Inside. 
Uh, let's see. What other special mechanics and features? We have gems for weapons, which I think was the game's way of trying to more easily let you swap weapons. Because a majority of a weapon's damage comes from gems. The only counter to that, or one counter to that, is that in order to get unlock all of the gem slots in a weapon, you have to upgrade it. Um, and three is, three is the max on most, so... I guess you would have to at least have it up open to plus seven, or upgraded to plus seven. And then plop those gems in there. But you can just swap these damage gems from weapon to weapon, and suddenly whatever weapon those gems are in is pretty darn good. <clears throat> you don't like gems, they limited the amount of weapons you could use. I think I think upgrade material lack of upgrade material is what did that more more so. Gems could have used some more variety. The problem that I have is uh, when you're approaching the game the first time and you don't understand the gem system and how good they can be, <clears throat> you can fall behind on damage really easily and it can be a pain. Also, the fact that your parry damage is all from skill, the skill stat, which, you know, formerly dex, um, it's kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, other mechanics? Leveling up, of course, is through the doll. Um, just like the Emerald Herald, just like the Maiden in Black, you have this NPC that you return to every time you want to level. Uh, she's a very kawaii character. You may become attached to her. She has somewhat of a hidden story of her own and some sort of a potential humanity to her, even though she's just a doll. Um, yeah, there's some sort of past there. <clears throat> and you can kill her and nothing matters. <clears throat> you can use her how you like. In Lobos' case, murder. Yes. Uh, and then you also have a permanent shop in your Hunter's Dream where you can buy stuff with blood echoes instead of souls. Blood echoes didn't bother me. It's whatever. Souls are souls. I'll call them souls till the day I die. Um, what other features... Armor is not really a big deal in this game. Um, it can grant you some defenses and stuff, but you n you have only one roll and dash type. There's no fat roll. There's no over encumbrance. There's no encumbrance at all. You can use the biggest of weapons and have the exact same movement. Um, some people might argue that that's a that's a con because the big weaponed people should be more encumbered. But you know, it's a different way to look at it. It didn't bug me. I don't do multiplayer. It doesn't affect me really that much. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> there was n a bad decision. Well, particularly with the long load times of Bloodborne. Having to return to a lantern. And then return from that lantern to the Hunter's Dream. And then back to wherever you were. Load screens for days, man. That could be two minutes of just loading of that. <clears throat> All about fashion and Bloodborne. Yeah, ultimately, armor didn't wasn't super... I don't know. It, it wasn't a huge determining factor in your success. It definitely helps. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a huge factor. Um, it's all mechanics. The AI, the AI in this game, for uh, particularly for like other hunters, 
stepped it up so much. So much so that many people, I think, were unsure of whether this opponent was actually an AI or a person. Um, I had that thought anyways. I was fighting this thing and I was like, is this a real person or what? Um, a fantastic step up. In, in, yeah. It was good. It was very good. Uh, very challenging. They play just like a player. They think just like a player. They heal just like a player. Super good. I was really impressed with, with the AI there. <clears throat> um, we, we touched on storylines. We did some lore stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's talk level design. Um, I already mentioned the extra load screens. I mean, it's a thing. Uh, it's a thing that happens in all the games where you have to return to a hub. The problem is when you return to the hub in Bloodborne, there aren't like a myriad of NPCs that will show up that will have new things for you necessarily. Um, you can unlock new items to purchase from the shop, which is you know it's nice. Um, German has like. He has more dialogue and stuff. And, uh... What? Oh, yeah. I know that music. And, uh... <clears throat> I think the doll has some more dialogue, too. German can... You can find German sleeping and get some... Some spicy... Dream dialogue there. But I don't think it's it was as big as, like, Demon Souls or Dark Souls 2... Where you could really, it would really change what you could do back at the hub. Um. Um. What were we talking about? Oh, level design. Yes. Le as far as level design, it was pretty. It was pretty much what I expect from Dark Souls. Lots of awesome shortcuts. Um. The world was certainly more linear. It, it's not this Dark Souls 1 thing that... Where you start in the middle and you can go any direction branching out. Uh, pretty linear, linear in that respect. Linearity does not bother me, so that's not a... Not a big deal for me. Um, you know, and it wasn't a super big deal for Dark Souls 2, but... It was just that end game that I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> that's true, that's true. The hub for characters... Yeah, I... Like the Cathedral Ward, yeah. Um, and they would give you stuff, but you wouldn't bring them back and you wouldn't have, like... I mean, because there weren't spells. There wouldn't be a spell vendor and then a new item vendor or anything like that. They, they, were, they were interesting... Like for the for the sake of having interesting stories and interactions, um, and I I that was that was a very cool thing, uh, <laughs> especially with like the um, the abhorrent beast man guy. You can really shake some things up there, um, but yeah. Uh, I keep losing what we're talking about. Level design. Level design. A lot of, lot of warping from places to places. You go from... From Yahar Ghoul to... The lecture hall. And the lecture hall to two different dreams. A little interesting. Um, but I guess if you're traveling between dreams... How else can you do that without a warp? Unless you're... Ah, like nightmares and stuff. <clears throat> It's, it's, it's an interesting level. Each area on its own was well designed within itself with shortcuts and all these hidden things and great stuff. And I really liked returning back to the, the first area of the game, like almost midway through in the forest. Uh, but it's, it, it was very linear, linear approach. You go you know, Shadows Yarnum. Rom, 
Oh, we get teleported to Yahar Ghoul. One reborn. Mikolash. Night, uh, wet nurse. And then the, uh, and then the hunter's dream sets itself on fire. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Dark Souls One, Dark Souls One World. Is what really, uh, is what really keeps me coming back to that. Um, and there was a skip early on in Bloodborne where you could go to the midpoint of the game and collect stuff and get powerful early on. Uh, but they patched it out, of course, and now, yeah, you know, you can't do that. So there's kind of limited paths to starting the game, and so that's what I like more about Dark Souls One. Um, Rammer Rum, thanks for resubbing. Yeah, world design in Dark Souls 1 is pretty god tier. Is is great. Very good. <clears throat> yeah, Bloodborne has zone in Forbidden Woods. It went literally to the start of the game. Yep. Yep. And to the uh Yosefka's clinic, the back route, which is also an area you can't access. And you're like, okay, well maybe I'll see her around. Then you can get back in there, and then there's mysteries to uncover there. And then getting to Kanehurst was a bit of an ordeal. It's, it kind of went Ash and Mistheart in that respect. Because you needed, you needed a thing. And then it told you a vague area to go. But at least you had an idea of the area. <laughs> Instead of like, now you can access memories of the past. And you're just like, uh... Do I throw it on the ground and listen? Or, I don't know. Anyways. Level design was fine. Um, not, not uh, a whole lot unique to speak of. I think it was good. I think I'd say it was good. Whereas Dark Souls One, I would say is great. Uh, and most of the Soulsborne games, I would give a good level design rating to. <clears throat> Enemies slash bosses. Beasts, aliens, other hunters. The, 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 the creatures they created are legitimately disturbing visually. Ibritus is like, what the fuck am I looking at? It's a macaroni, tentacle... Flower looking weird shit squid thing from space that shoots like space magic. It's what? And then Blood Starved Beast is this beast whose back skin was like flayed and flapped over his head. And what? I don't even. The grotesque man. Ludwig is a combination horse man disturbing thing with a second mouth that's eyes that spits more space goop and then he stands up and he's like a tall horse man with a gigantic sword ridiculous awesome super awesome I mean visually visually they're fantastic and um, and mechanically they're just as fantastic Bloodborne having a faster paced combat, a faster dash, really gets your blood pumping, no pun intended, when you're dodging these these bosses. Definitely super good. We didn't talk about the Chalice Dungeons super uh, a whole lot, but they have unique bosses and enemies, which I thought was very cool. Um, if you don't know the Chalice Dungeons, they are randomly generated dungeons kind of with the intent of well they're not all randomly generated there is a set like story path to them but after a certain point you can create randomized versions of them and farm all sorts of things better gems better runes um better weapons or different weapons uh and so i think the idea was to uh, you can get upgrade materials too and those are to supply players with things to keep doing. Keep that longevity of the game going. Um, 
it took me several playthroughs of the Chalice Dungeons and a guide to get through it quickly for me to really be like, yeah, I like Chalice Dungeons. I like Chalice Dungeons. Um, but that's, that's, that's saying a bit, right? I don't know. <clears throat> uh, and the Chalice Boss Dungeon designs were pretty cool. I mean, Dungeon Boss's designs were pretty cool, too. Uh, I mean, Bloodletting Beast is one. The dog, the watch dog of the Old Lords. Some of the, some of the harder fights in the game, too. Um, it was fun. Good places. Uh, my favorite boss, I have said, is Ibritus. But or uh, Orphan of Cost, man. Orphan of Cost is so beautifully animated and mechanically designed. It's fantastic. And again, the DLC is the kind of place I would expect for the, the most polished content to be. <clears throat> A lot of love went into Orphan, that's for sure. A lot of love and hate. <laughs> And Lawrence, while he seems like just a fiery cleric beast, he mostly is. I like his face, too. It was a real surprise, and I was like, that's awesome. That's awesome. Plus, I mean, the music, of course. Music makes it <clears throat> 20 times better. Maria was cool, too. Maria is very cool. Great music as well. And just flashy all around. Minimal Zen, thanks for the resub. Um, we're listening to Mikolash here, who is an interesting boss fight. Probably one I don't, one of my lesser favorites, just because it's he's annoying as shit. But uh, it was an interesting design. Like we said, we've only seen a fight like that there, and I think. Astrea, Maiden Astrea from Demon Souls, where there's actually a whole area and there's other enemies and items to loot and stuff like that. It's kind of like a playground almost for Mikolash to play with you. Um, very cool though. Uh, some of the bosses seemed cool but kind of dropped the ball. Like N Wet Nurse, I wasn't super crazy on after beating it. I was like, okay, he's. He looks really badass, but he wasn't so bad. Just circle around, hit him in the butt. Circle around, hit him in the butt. Um, Ludwig is one of the most fun bosses to just dodge. Mechanically, to understand him is just... It's a treat! It's a treat. And, uh... German is an excellent... An excellent... Counterpart to you. An excellent match. Good rival, I guess, if you want to say that. Even though you don't really know he's a rival until kind of the end. <clears throat> ah, Gascoin's great, too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good bosses in this game. Fantastic. Fantastic. Art style. We talked about it. You know. Victorian-influenced. Lovecraftian-influenced. Dark. Gritty. So much detail in those environments. If you just like walk around Yarnum and just like stare in the corners, there's all sorts of neat surprises to find and everything. So good. It's just so good. Um, and we, we kind of talked about items. I mean, they had some new things in there. Bloodborne had their versions of Molotovs. And, uh, you know, heal items. Bullets were new. Beast blood pellets are a new thing. Um, not really any comparisons for that, necessarily. Haha, <clears throat> <laughs> frenzy chicks, yeah. Um, winter lanterns are pretty... Pretty gruesome. Pretty gruesome. Ram is Miyazaki's favorite. <laughs> yeah. Most annoying potato of potatoes. Fair enough. I'm having less and less to say on the games as we go, uh, but I praise Bloodborne the most. And it's, it really comes down to those mechanics. That's what makes it my personal favorite, is the updates to the combat. Faster paced, more risk, more reward. Um, 
transform weapons. Just so cool. We talked about NPCs, yeah. I don't know. How do you think Lobro is going to handle Bloodborne's design considering how squeamish he's proven to be? It should be interesting. It should be interesting. Uh, yeah, it's it's only going to get... He's only going to get more grossed out from, from where he's at. Right now, he's getting freaked out by... Uh, what was it last night that he saw? I don't remember. Stuff in the gutter, maybe? He's getting freaked out by poison statues and stuff. Uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. But, you know, I mean, I don't have a whole lot more to say about Bloodborne. It's just... Uh, I mean, the game doesn't speak for itself if you haven't played it, but... It's... It's... It's my fave. It's my fave. It's my baby. It doesn't have the level design, which draws me back like Dark Souls 1 does. Um, but it's that combat. That combat, the bosses. Oh, the rotten. Yeah, the rotten is like... He was like, ugh! He was kind of freaked out by the rotten. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It should be good. Um... Any final questions before we move on to 